Hi, my name is Gerard Younger, and today we're taking a look at the XM5s or the WH-1000 XM5s from Sony. I'm a owner of the XM4s and I decided to upgrade to the XM5s. Um, so this video is mainly going to be a review and me sharing my thoughts. So if you guys are interested, let's take a closer look. Hope you enjoyed that closer look. Next, let's take a look at what comes inside the box. So the packing material has absolutely no plastic included. Um, Sony uses something they call their original blended material, which consists of bamboo, sugarcane, and post-consumer recycled paper. So essentially the packing is made up of 100% paper material. With that being said, the package contents are pretty minimal. What you'll get inside is pretty much this. Um, it has contents included, but on the outside, it pretty much tells you how to set up the headset with the Sony headphone app, which I'll dive more into later in the video. But you'll get more contents inside this. Um, the main thing that you'll be greeted with is this piece of paper, which tells you to keep the headphones away from rain, sweat, or wet hands. So liquid appears to be enemy numero uno, so to summarize what Sony is trying to convey here, basically you don't want to have any liquids near these headsets. If you don't want to cause any possible damage to your pair of XM5s, then you'd want to follow these warnings very carefully because unfortunately the XM5s would not be water resistant. Sony does not provide any IP ratings for these headphones. To briefly go over the remaining contents inside that packet, you get a reference guide for the headset, you get warranty information, which would be a one year limited warranty from Sony. And you get a free trial um, code for 360 Reality Audio, which is a service that's provided by Sony. That would sum up all the paperwork that comes included inside the box. Beyond that, you would have your industry leading noise canceling pair of XM5 headphones resting inside their included travel case. Opening up the case, you'll be greeted with the XM5s fitted comfortably inside. But before we take a further look, I do want to mention there is a tiny compartment that houses the additional accessories that come included. One would be a headphone cable and the other would be a USB-C to USB type A charging cable. To start off with the basics, let's do a comparison between the XM4 and the XM5 carry case. So starting off with the XM5s, um, they have a rather unique design. So on the ends, um, they're designed in a way where um, it allows for the case to somewhat compress in on itself. So if you're trying to pack these, um, due to the case being able to compress a little bit, that might give you a little bit more packing room. It wouldn't be anything substantial, but that would be something you know, that could be possible. The top of the case has a loop attached and you could use that to hang the headset from somewhere where you can easily find them. The material kind of reminds me of a seat belt almost. So durability with that would not be a concern at all. Uh, it seems very securely attached to the case. The XM4's case has something similar as well, but the one that they put on the XM5, um, it definitely feels like they used better material. To compare the case size between the XM4 and the XM5's, the XM4's case is definitely smaller. The reason being is because the XM4's can actually collapse down whereas the new generation XM5s, um, they would not have that capability. So the XM5s can only be adjusted uh, in terms of the height, but they cannot be collapsed down. So the case for the XM5s are going to be a bit bigger. 
So if you're looking to travel with these, that is something to consider. Um, the XM4s, um, they are collapsible and so they would have a smaller travel footprint. Now for weight comparison, the XM4s are going to be a little bit more heavier than the XM5s. The XM4s come in at 254 grams, whereas the XM5s, Sony was able to chop down on that to bring it down to 250 grams. So the XM5s are going to be a little bit lighter than the XM4s and that could potentially help with comfort. However, comfort is subjective and it ultimately depends on the individual. In my own subjective opinion, I think the XM5s do feel more comfortable than the XM4s. So I've been using the XM4s for over a year now. And since day one, um, after about maybe 45 minutes, my ears do start to become a bit sore because it feels like they're pressing down on my ear. And uh, that might help, you know, with the, the noise canceling, having, having a very tight fit around your head, but um, it does take a toll after a while and you can start, well, I can start to feel it and it does start to hurt around my ears. But with wearing the XM5s, um, that doesn't happen as quickly. Um, so they definitely feel uh, more comfortable uh, for me. Speaking of comfort, that leads me to design and build quality of the XM4s versus the XM5s. Now, I think the XM5s have the better design. However, they don't look as sleek when compared to the XM4s, but I just like the more simple, basic design that Sony went ahead with with these new headphones. For the paint finish, both the XM4 and XM5 have a matte coating, which feels soft to the touch. The XM4s come in three different colors. They would be midnight blue, black, and silver. And then the XM5s would only have two colors, and that would be black and silver. So I have both headsets in black, and I will say that both of them are equally fingerprint magnets. But if you decide to go with the silver for either model, I wouldn't expect this to be as noticeable. The XM4s and the XM5s both use a synthetic leather material for the headband and the ear cups. On the XM5s, the headband appears to be very flexible. You can stretch the headphone and bend it in different directions, and it appears to hold up quite well. The XM4s are flexible as well, but I definitely don't feel as comfortable stretching them to the extent of what's capable on the XM5s. Circling back to the hinge subject, so once again, the XM4s have a foldable collapsible hinge design. However, this feature has been removed from the XM5s, so they no longer have the ability to fold. I will state that there have been a number of users reporting that the hinges on the XM4s have broke. So I would say one positive out of this is that the XM5s have one less point of failure since they no longer have that foldable collapsible hinge design. Speaking from my own personal experience with my set of XM4 headphones, I have not had any issues with the hinges and they still feel as strong as they felt since day one. Overall, the build design on both these headphones are very good, but the wider air cups, the more flexible headband, and what appears to be softer synthetic leather material on the XM5s makes it the winner in terms of the comfort battle between the two. In terms of durability, I can only speak on the XM4s currently. I've had those for more than a year. And um, I can say confidently that these have had no issues at all since I've had them. I've used them in the gym and they actually advise not to for those, but they've held up quite well and they actually still look pretty brand new. For the XM5s, um, I've recently received these. I've only, I've only had them for a couple of weeks, so I can't really speak on durability just yet, but they do feel like they'll hold up quite well. Time would only tell. Jumping into the battery life for both headsets, for the XM4s, you can expect 30 hours of runtime with noise canceling on. With it off, you can get around 38 hours. With the XM5s, you would be getting around the same with noise canceling on, which is 30 hours. And then with it off, you can get up to 40 hours of runtime. Now, battery life depends on the selected settings that you have applied. So it's going to vary um, depending on the settings that you have selected. 
If you select a higher quality audio codec, such as LDAC, then you can expect a shorter battery life on both the XM4 and XM5 headsets. For charging capabilities, starting with the XM4s, a 10 minute charge would get you five hours of music playback. On the XM5s, a three minute charge would get you one hour of playback. And then a 10 minute charge would also get you five hours of music playback. However, if you have a USB PD compatible AC adapter to use with the XM5s, then that would turn a three minute charge into three hours of music playback. So if you have one of those, that would actually speed up the charging for the headset. And keep in mind that these music playback times are approximate and it ultimately depends on the settings that you have applied to either headset. So I've performed some charging tests on both the XM4s and the XM5s. With the XM5s using a USB power delivery compatible AC adapter, when charging these headsets, or the XM5 specifically, from under 10%, and by the way, uh, with either headset, when they're under 10%, they'll turn off automatically and let you know that they need to be charged. You can turn them back on, but they'll turn right back off after a few and let you know the same thing. So these really can't be used uh, when they're under 10%. Um, you have to charge them. However, when they're above 10%, they'll work fine again. Um, but yeah, to get back on track, the XM5s when using a USB PD compatible AC adapter, from under 10% to 100% using a USB PD AC adapter, um, I was able to charge the headsets in approximately 33 minutes. Now with the XM4s, they're not compatible with a USB power delivery AC adapter, uh, but using the same adapter, I was able to charge them in two hours. Now your charging time may vary depending on the AC adapter that you're using. In my case, I was using a nine volt, three amp, USB power delivery compatible AC adapter. Now to go over the charge times provided by Sony, they state for the XM4s using a USB powered AC adapter, the full charge time would take three hours. With the XM5s using a USB powered AC adapter, the charge time would be three and a half hours. Um, but again, depending on the AC adapter that you use, it's possible to achieve faster charge times. The XM4s have five microphones and the XM5s have eight, four of which would have beamforming technology, which utilizes AI-based technology that has the ability to reduce noise in loud environments and also to reduce wind noise. So it does a very good job in isolating your voice and very loud environments with a lot of background noise. So next, I'm just going to compare the XM5s versus the XM4 microphones so you guys can see what the difference would be between the two. So right now I'm doing an audio test with the XM5 headset. Uh, this is what the microphone sounds like. So what I'll do is I'll switch between the audio from the headset and from the microphone that I have. I have two, I have one here or here, my, whichever one I might choose. Uh, that sounds the best. But um, yeah, right now this is a, a test with the internal microphone on the XM5 headset. Just to show you guys you know, what the quality sounds like, how much noise it blocks out, and uh, hopefully this is a good test you know, that showcases that. Right now, this is the XM4 headset. This is what the microphone quality from the XM4 is going to the XM5s. So the XM5 have the better microphone, but just wanted to show you guys the difference in quality uh, between the two. So this is the uh, capability of the XM4 in terms of canceling out background noise. I'm gonna switch between the uh, microphone that I have up here uh, and the internal mic. To show you guys how much sound it was out there going to turn off I have a simulation um, of ambient sound, city ambient sound. Uh, for my system, just to give you guys an idea. of how much sound. Hearing both audio side by side, the XM5s were for sure better. The four beamforming microphones that are included definitely do a very good job of isolating your voice even when there's background noise present to provide crystal clear audio. The XM4s did okay, but they were not as good as the XM5s. So if you're looking to use these headsets for voice calls, the XM5s would be the better route to go. This next test is going to be on the sound quality from both headsets. 
However, please keep in mind that this will not be a true to sound test, meaning that I won't be able to recreate the exact sound that you'll get if you had the headphones on your head. However, hopefully this gives you a good idea of the sound difference between the XM4s and the XM5s. So let's jump into it. That was the audio sound quality difference between the XM4s and the XM5s. So I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not an audiophile, so I don't know the difference between lows, mids, and highs. But what I can say is the XM4s definitely sound a little bit more bassier than the XM5s. The XM5s were a bit more neutral overall, but they both produced a crisp sound. Um, but what I would prefer in a headset is a little bit more bass. So I would choose the XM4s in terms of sound quality over the XM5s, but to each his own. So both these headphones have a touch sensor control panel on the right ear cup, which allows you to use hand gestures to control certain aspects of the earphone. So for example, um, to demonstrate that, if you're listening to music, if you double tap the headphone, you can play a song if you double tap the headphone again, you can poise the song. If you swipe to the right, you can move forward a song. If you swipe to the left, you can move back a song. If you swipe up, you can turn up the volume. If you swipe down, you can turn down the volume. If you swipe up and hold, you can increase the volume to the maximum. If you swipe down and hold, you can decrease the volume. Those last two that I mentioned, those are only on the XM5s. They would not be present on the XM4. But to continue, if you cover the right earphone, then that enables quick attention, which lets an ambient sound into the headphone. And then for the XM5s, if you put two fingers and hold, you can activate the voice assistant on the headset as well. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the Centru Control app for both the XM4 and the XM5s. Without this app, you will not have access to a lot of the um, options that you have available or controls that you have available with these headphones. So if you want the full functionality out of these, um, you would want to download this app. I'll show the XM4 app first to just give you guys an idea of what you get with those. And then I'm going to move on to the XM5. So starting with the XM4s, uh, inside the app, you'll have on the first window the status for the headset. So this gives you the battery life and it gives you the uh, headset that you're connected to. And also it lets you know the current audio codec that you have uh, selected. Um, so in the first status menu, you'll have adaptive sound control. And essentially this allows you to change between um, either ambient and noise uh, cancellation. Um, you can turn it to optimize where it basically detects if you're walking or if you're running or if you're sitting down, it's able to switch between noise canceling and um, also ambient sound, or you can just turn it off in this as well. So taking a further look at it, um, I keep mine off because it kind of, it's kind of interruptive when it's on. So um, I just like to leave it off. And to give you an idea, um, you go to ambient bass uh, sound control. Um, here um, for the XM4s, you can set to the bass, which is noise canceling. And then you have 20 levels of ambient sound. So that's basically if you're you know walking down the street, if you want to hear cars running, uh, sorry, if you want to hear cars moving, then um, you want to definitely have ambient sound on because if you're you know running through traffic a lot, you don't want to have just noise canceling on it. That's going to be kind of dangerous. So having ambient sound um, all the way up would be something I would recommend. So moving on. Um, so this is for staying. So this is if you're sitting down. Um, then the next option would be walking and you can change this to, you know, 14 or 20 where you can hear cars uh, or if you just want to, you know, hear just people. Um, you can focus on vo uh, voices. Um, I 
typically turn that off. Uh, but yeah, um, you can do that for each of the options that you have here. Uh, so for if you're doing transport, you can also have this turned on for that. And that's pretty much the adaptive sound control. Um, you can also turn off the notification because you get notifications when it switches over to a different sound. So if you're walking, you have that set to ambient and you were sitting down, which you have that set to noise canceling, you'll get a, a, a slight notification sound when it switches. So that can be kind of, uh, kind of interruptive. Um, but yeah, you go to the three dots here and then you go to adaptive sound control, uh, settings, and then you can turn off the tone. This is where the setting is. I have mine off. Moving on to uh, sound. Um, here, uh, from the beginning, you get ambient sound control. You can adjust this the same. Uh, level one is noise canceling, and then if you go, you know, above that, that's going to allow you 20 levels of ambient sound control. You can focus on voice. Speak to chat would allow you to talk if the headset is playing music. So if you begin to speak, the music would automatically poise. And then once you're done with any conversation that you're having, the headset would go back into playing uh, whatever content that it was playing. So uh, it's an automatic feature that takes you into ambient mode uh, if you speak at all. Um, so equalizer, equalizer, you can change the, uh, the settings for the headset um to your liking so if you like a certain sound you can adjust the settings here um, they have some custom presets but um, if you wanted to manually uh set one yourself you would have that option to uh within the app manual but i typically just have mine off i'm fine with that 360 reality audio this is sony's uh service for music i don't really uh mess with that sound quality mode the, uh, for this, you can choose between prioritize sound uh, quality. Um, so your range is probably going to be a bit messed up. If you prefer range, then you would want to select the prior, you know, priority on stable connection. Um, so that allows you to go far uh, from the headset. Bluetooth is capable of up to, uh, I believe, 30 feet. Um, and then DSEE Extreme, um, that's kind of like an upscale type of software where it uses uh, technology to uh, upscale uh, low quality songs. Um, I don't really have that on too much. Uh, that drains battery if you're not aware. So if you have that turned on, that will drain your battery life a little bit faster. When you head over to system, um, here you can connect to two devices. You can turn that on. When you turn that feature on though, you don't have the ability to use LDAC. So if you have connect two devices turned on, uh, simultaneously, then the LDAC capability will be disabled. So if you want better sound quality, you have to turn that feature off. Uh, then you have the change function of custom button. So the XM4 has a custom button on it that you can um, customize. Um, here are the different options that you have. Uh, press one time, long press. These uh, you can change. Uh, let's see. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on. So this, I actually don't really use this feature too much. So um, let's move on to automatic power off. Well, uh, let's go to touch sensor control panel. That's for the gestures. So if you're using the gestures, you want to have that on. Uh, you don't want to turn that off. Automatic power off. That's for if you take off the headset, you forget to turn it off when it's in, in its case or wherever. Um, it automatically powers off to save battery. Uh, pause when headphones are taken off. So that's if you want to take your headphones off to speak to somebody um, and you don't want to do the uh, speak to chat feature gesture, you can just take your headphones off and it poises the music as well. Um, notification and voice guide. Um, that is voice guidance played from the headphone depending on operation and status. Um, gives you important notices. And let's move on to automatic download of software so that's for updates if i'm not mistaken and that's pretty much everything for the xm4s you get like activity data um, that gives you um, three menus log badges uh, time that you use it things of that sort which is pretty cool so now let's move on to the xm5s 
Okay, now we're going to take a look at the XM5 headphone app. It's pretty much the same thing, but I just want to go over it with you guys. So in the first uh, menu, again, you're going to have the uh, status menu, and that's going to give you the headphones that you're connected to. That's going to give you the audio um, that you have selected. I have LDAC. And then the battery life for the headphones, um, it gives you the current battery life. You have the adaptive sound control as well for the XM5s. Um, pretty much the same options that I mentioned in uh, the XM4 side, but um, you have the option to turn adaptive sound control on, and this is for if you're moving around. So if you're walking, you can switch the ambient if you want to set it manually to that. Um, you can have a set to optimize switch um, suited for you. And that would basically learn um, your actions and uh, do everything you know for you. But I don't like that, so I just have it set to uh, a manual way based on based on action. So you can set it for when you're walking yourself. Same thing with the X and four essentially for staying, which is sitting down, walking, running. Um, by the way, it's funny that they mentioned running because these are not meant for exercising. So I don't, I don't know what what running they actually mean there. Like if they mean exercising running or if they mean just like running for a bus or something but um they have during transport as well you can set this for the xm 5s too you get you know three different options noise canceling ambient sound and just completely off and you have the same 20 levels of adjustment for the xm 5s as well and then you have the focus on voice um, option for the xm 5s as well let's back out of here um, they have one that's based on, it, it can automatically uh, learn your location. Uh, this is what this option is for at the bottom here, but again, I don't use that. Um, you can also turn off notifications with the XM5 as well. Have my notification tone off. To go back, um, you have sound and pretty much the same option, ambient sound control. You can switch this between noise canceling, ambient sound and off. 20 levels of adjustment you can focus on voice um, so focuses uh, more on voices and suppresses uh, pretty much everything else uh, noise uh, equalizer same um, options uh, pretty much as the XM4 you can you know adjust the volume or not the volume but you can adjust the sound of the headset to your liking uh, me I just typically leave it on off um, but you can manually adjust this if you want it to and let's move on. So same 360 um, Reality Audio, that's Sony's app. I don't use that. Uh, Bluetooth connectivity, same as the XM4. You can, you know, priority on sound quality or you have a priority on uh, a stable connection, which allows you to go pretty far. Whereas the other sound quality, um, if you prefer that one, your range will be affected. Uh, same DSEE Audio. Um, DSEE Extreme, I mean, um, upscales low quality audio. And then under system, we get the same connect two devices simultaneously. So you can connect to two devices. Me, I typically have my headphones connected to my phone and then my computer so I can easily switch between my phone if I wanted to and my computer for audio uh, playback. Uh, you have voice assistant. Um, I have mine set to uh, Google Voice Assistant, so when you do the uh, two press gesture on the headset, that activates this, so you can you can say like, what's the weather for tomorrow? And it gives you the weather uh, in the headphones. You hear uh, the, the voice from Google uh, Assistant. Um, you have touch sensor control panel. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. Um, you have a uh, option to control the uh, custom button on the headphone. Um, but doesn't really give you a lot of options. Uh, you have quick access. You can set quick access for the buttons. Um, you can choose Spotify. It's only Spotify. You can't do anything else currently. That That is the only option uh, to customize one of the, the, the uh, button on the headphone with. Um, if you press it twice, it, it, it will open your playlist on Spotify. Um, it's cool. Um, automatic power off, same thing. If you forget to turn off your headset and you put it into your bag, um, it would all automatically turn off after a few um, to save battery. Um, pause when headphones are taken off, same thing as the XM4, you take off the headset, uh, you can speak, and it pauses your music. 
notification and voice guides, um, automatic download of software. Um, so everything is pretty much the same. You get services on the XM5 and it's not really um, anything that I use. Uh, something else with Spotify. Seems like a lot of stuff just limited to Spotify, but you get the activity as well. It gives you the uh, log of your usage. Here it shows my XM4 and my XM5s. Um, and yeah, that is the app. <laughs> Both the XM4s and the XM5s, the noise cancelling function is effective against low frequency sounds and that's something that includes trains, airplanes, or even offices, but they're not as effective against high frequency sounds and for an example, that would be human voices or sirens. I'm going to provide some recording of the active noise cancelling and the ambient sound function that I took from both the XM4s and the XM5s. Keep in mind that this is not a true to sound experience, however, hopefully it gives you guys a good idea of what the sound difference is. So there you have it, that's the ANC and ambient sound performance difference between the two. The XM5s use something called the Auto Noise Cancelling Optimizer function, which essentially uses AI to adjust the noise cancelling levels depending on your environment and wearing conditions. Whereas with the XM4s, it's just one set function when you do the optimizer. For me personally, I would just choose the XM4s ANC performance over the XM5s because again, the XM5s, um, it's, it's auto adjusting uh, actively on the go. Um, but in general, both of these have very good noise canceling performance. For ambient sound, they're both pretty good, but the XM5s definitely sound like they let in a little bit more ambience uh, than the XM4s do. <laughs> Now, if you guys are not aware, these are not just great for travel. You can use these with your computer, so Windows or Mac. Uh, these could be used with your Android or iOS device and potentially your gaming console. So both of these have a power button on the left ear cup. And if you hold that down for an extended period of time, that would put it into pairing mode where you can link these headphones to your device. Um, they also have an additional button that allows you to switch between active noise canceling and ambient sound. Um, and they have a 3.5 millimeter jack as well on the left ear cup. And I will say with that connected, these headphones sound a lot better. Um, so if you wanna use that connection, you, you will get better sound uh, from these headphones with that connection. Um, and these also have an indicator light um, when they're being charged. They have a USB-C connector on the right ear cup 
that allows you to charge um, these headphones. I just want to mention another feature that was present on the XM4s that have been removed from the XM5s, which would be NFC pairing. If you had a compatible NFC device and you tapped it against the left ear cup of the XM4s, that allowed for a quick pairing of the headset. And then if you tapped it again, that allowed for a quick disconnect of the headset. Now, I briefly want to speak on gym usage, but please keep in mind that both headphones do not have an IP rating, so they will not be water resistant, and that includes sweat. So if you use them in a the gym and you're sweating heavily, you could potentially damage these headphones. However, if that's not a concern that you have, I'll share my experience starting with the XM4s. So I've used those in a gym for over a year now, and I have had no issues at all. They've been great. The XM5s, I've used those for about three weeks, and so far, no issues as well. For exercising, um, ones like benching, deadlifting, squatting, um, these stay on pretty securely if adjusted properly. But if you're doing fast explosive movements, that may be an issue at that point. For me, um, I use these mainly for the noise canceling capability. They just do a very good job of blocking out the gym noise around me. And that allows me to enjoy the music that I'm listening to while I work out. Cost, the XM4s are going to be $350 and then the XM5s are going to be $400. However, both of these typically go on sale around the holiday season. I've seen the XM4s drop below $300 and then the XM5s, I've seen those drop $50 below MSRP. So if you're patient, you can definitely get these at a discount. Now, if you're currently choosing between the two, I would say the key differences is the XM4s are going to be the cheaper option of the two. They're going to be collapsible, so they're a little bit more travel friendly and they have slightly better bass than the XM5s. The XM5s are going to be better in the microphone quality department. Um, the XM5s excels in that over the XM4s. The XM5s also have auto-optimized ANC performance, and they're going to have the faster charging capability. However, either would be a great option. They're both excellent headphones. If you want to know my choice between the two, I would go with the XM4s because they're just as good as the XM5s and I would say the ANC performance, the sound quality is better in my opinion on the XM4s and they offer the better price to performance and so my choice would be the XM4s. And that pretty much concludes the video, it was not a short video at all, but if you guys stayed up until this point, I really appreciate you. Um, if you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like, comment below. If you want to see any additional content from me regarding these headphones, I'll be you know more than happy to post them. But yeah, really appreciate you guys watching. Um, this was a very long video. This is my longest video so far to date. And um, if you liked it, again, leave a like. If you dislike, I'll leave two dislike clicks. Um, and hopefully I'll make another video and see you guys in the next one. So you guys have a good one. Take care.